Hey, what's going on everybody? Alex with you here as usual. Thank you for dropping by for yet another chess video. It's always great to see you guys. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Europe Chess Championship Chess Computer Chess Set uh, from Millennium Chess, same company that um, I made my previous video on Karpov Chess School. In fact, we're going to be taking a look at this chess set today and I'm just going to show you how closely it um, is similar to the Karpov Chess School, but we're also going to take a look and see what the main differences are and you know what do you get from the Karpov Chess computer for the additional $20, whether or not it makes sense for you to possibly consider this chess set versus the Karpov and kind of uh, try to conclude the video by uh, maybe giving you guys my personal opinion as far as which chess set I prefer over the other. Now, the reason why uh, I ended up getting two of the chess sets, like they are very, very similar to each other, is basically I saw that they did run a sale at the time when I was choosing these. So I ended up like 30% off or something altogether. Plus, I wanted to get just over that $100 price point so that I could get that free shipping because that would also save me like 10 to $15, which just made sense at the time. So Basically, I paid 115 I think, for both chess sets, uh, whereas otherwise I would have had to pay close to $90 for the Karpov Chess School and close to $70 for this. Um, so it saved me quite a few dollars. But anyways, uh, by the way, before I get started, if you guys do hear there's maybe kids sounds, kids playing in the background, that is the case because it's actually fall break. That's one of the reasons why I have not been able to make this video, which I was intending to make last week, just because kids are home and it's fall break. So, okay, so let's just go ahead and start off by taking a look at the box and see what we can gather as far as what type of things are provided in the box. You have the, the chess set. Um, like I said, dimensions and everything are gonna be very, very similar to the Karpov Chess School. Uh, illuminated display. Um, compartment for the pieces as we've seen in the um, and then 13 languages selectable uh, chess and seven more brain games now by seven more brain games um, they do right uh, like advertise right over here it's eight and one and we'll take a look at that at that little feature here in just a second but what I'm gonna tell you is one of the main main differences between this chess set and the um, Karpov chess school is uh, when you are in the back of the chess set right over here and you open up the compartment for the pieces right over here, we still have the two compartments. But as you can see, and I'll probably zoom this in a little bit closer, in one of the compartments you have checkers. So this actually does have uh, the feature for you to play checkers. Um, when you click new game, it'll select between chess, checkers, um, reverse C, then it has like a bunch more that I'm not really familiar with just because most of the time I'm, I'm focused more on playing chess, but it does have like a couple of additional things. It's, it's, it's a nice feature, especially for somebody who's just starting out. Maybe they get a little bit bored with chess and they want to play the other games. So uh, at the same time, I would, I would say that it's, it's nicer. It's a little bit more like gift proof, so to speak, because in a situation where you're not really sure if the person to whom you're gifting this might be completely enthusiastic in chess as you are. Maybe they'll play a few chess games and they'll say, what else can this thing do? And in that situation, you know, they can play all the other little games, checkers and all the other stuff. So that's kind of cool. Here we can take a look at the Karpov Chess School chess set and the Europe Championship chess set side by side so that we can kind of see more or less how they differ as you could see dimensions wise and everything they are very similar uh thickness they're going to be just a little bit different in thickness but that's you know minor minor nuances in design i am not really sure if the, the additional thickness on the karpov chess set really provides anything extra but it's it's like i said it's just a choice of, of design as you could see from the front they do look quite quite similar um display size button layout even though the button layout slightly different more or less they're kind of very similar on the back we could see right over here that both of the chess sets have the compartment for the batteries both of the chess sets will take three double a batteries and they both do not recommend using rechargeable batteries for one reason or another maybe it's due to 
uh, an increased risk of rechargeable batteries potentially leaking. I'm not really sure. I didn't delve into that information, but there you have it. Just don't use rechargeable batteries. And then in the top here, uh, both have the compartment for the pieces. Um, and like I said, in the Karpov chess school, the compartment is divided into, like you can see right over here, pieces are already falling out. You have two compartments, same as in the Europe chess set. So right over here, I already, I think I already lost this little foam pieces because uh, but the foam pieces help to kind of secure your pieces together. So when you're carrying the chess set, the foam pieces can just kind of lay and press against the chess pieces and the checkers pieces so they don't all wobble around inside there and don't make a bunch of noise. But here you can see yeah, checkers in one compartment, chess in the other, lots of checker pieces right here. Uh, both of the chess sets uh, come with an AC input, but in both of the chess sets, I was not provided the like the the little wall thing with the with the wire to plug in so i'm not sure if you have to buy that extra or i didn't really delve into asking i just assumed these were going to be portable chess sets i didn't even think there was going to be an option of plugging into the wall but there you have it i wasn't provided with a with an ac input or any type of a cord or anything like that on either of them uh, both of the chess sets, by the way, have a little reset button on the bottom. So if you get into a jam or if for some reason your chess set starts glitching, you have a little reset button, okay? So aside from that, like I said, everything as far as the construction is very, very similar. In fact, the fact that the European chess set here has two compartments for individual for checkers and chess, whereas the Karpov has two compartments, but one of them's empty, kind of reminds you of like those cars that you know you purchase a car and there's a bu bunch of like spaces for where buttons should be and then you try to ask yourself why are there no buttons where, where like you have the plastic spaces for the buttons and it's because like the higher end models of the same vehicle have buttons on them and they basically cut out buttons but there's no buttons on your model because yours is like the basic model that's what it seems like to me basically the cutout and everything they're kind of probably cutting out the, the bases for these in the same fashion and then they sort of create different chess sets out of them. Now one thing I do want to say is that Millennium, Millennium Chess um, is a company that actually makes quite decent electronic chess sets that are way more sophisticated than these that are going to be a lot more expensive of course but I've seen some really good wooden chess boards with wooden chess pieces that I've actually had my eye on and I did consider purchasing some, but at this time they're just way too expensive. And unless Millennium Chess ends up wanting to send me some for review, which, you know, then I'll, of course, I'll review them. But at this time, we're just going to limit ourselves with, you know, their entry level chess sets. So, like I said, the, the big thing here is the Karpov Chess School provides voice output. The Europe Chess Set does not provide voice output. You do not get that robotic voice asking you if you're sure about a particular move or whatever, which in my opinion, when I was playing the Europe chess set, um, even though when you're playing, especially if you're playing in the tutor mode, um, you will get a prompt. Like there will be a line here, it'll beep, and there'll be a line here that'll say like, are you sure about it? So you, it's still following the same, the same kind of software as the Karpov chess set, but it doesn't, output a voice and in my opinion I found that to be less distracting because you could still read it and you could say okay give me an explanation you click and it'll say okay you could have taken this pawn right over here but you didn't the problem with that at least for me in the beginning is I had to kind of get used to which buttons to press because when it says like are you sure it'll stop the game it'll freeze the game so that if you if you want to just disregard whatever it is cautioning you about, you can't just willy-nilly continue playing the game because when it prompts you for figuring out, you know, whether or not your move was the best move, from that point onward, it will not allow you to move until you actually figure out, okay, do I want to proceed or do I want to take my move back? Or for some reason, I was really getting confused here because... Uh, I was keep pressing these buttons here and all of a sudden every time it would say are you sure somehow I ended up reversing the board back to like I was playing white and all of a sudden I pressed some button 
Now I'm playing black for no particular reason, which I didn't want to do, so I had to finick around with these buttons and try to kind of learn the, the sequence of, of button presses for me to just continue on whenever it says are you sure just disregard and keep going but that's that i mean um the voice output option here seemed like a nice feature but honestly when i was playing this it seemed like the europe chess set was just less distracting overall a few beeps here and there was not as distracting as a robotic voice you know trying to prompt me that i'm about to like lose a piece or something but um, quite nice chess set overall, obviously playing with the computer. The computer system here, I have not played it extensively enough, I guess, to be able to say like, okay, all in all, the computer is of this rating. It says that the computer is at least 1400 rated um, ELO and the United States Chess Federation rating is about 1600, same as the other computers. So, but... I feel like, honestly, when I was playing the games that I was playing, it was it was playing okay, but I just didn't feel like it was doing its best. You know, even playing on online against other opponents, you, you kind of get a feeling that they're, everybody's trying, okay? Everybody's trying. The computer was like, okay, let me just throw a few pieces here and there. It wasn't like giving pieces away, but it was, I felt like, I felt like I, I had a, I didn't really need to sit down and be like really focused. I was sitting in my car one time and waiting for my daughter to come out of school and I was semi distracted with my son jumping around all over the car and so I was still able to to beat the computer pretty pretty easily. And one of the things that like towards the end of the game, the interesting part is that I was up two pawns. The opponent only had a king and I was up two pawns and they were about to be promoted. My king was like smack in the middle between the pawns protecting them and so it was pretty much kind of a, a clear clear resignation point, point for the opponent. However, the computer didn't really resign, okay? And so what the, it seemed like when the computer realized it really doesn't have a chance of winning the game, it started moving the king around in like a very repeated pattern. It was just like in the corner. It found itself in a corner. It was just sort of waiting it, waiting it out, basically realizing, okay, it's gonna get, it's gonna get mated here shortly, so might as well just move around. Which, which I did kind, kind of found strange, but it is a computer thinking. So like, it didn't really even want to try to get in between the pawns in any particular way. It didn't want to try to get stalemated in any particular way. The computer just kind of sort of gave up and was moving around and, and waiting to be, to be, you know, checkmated, which like I said, it, it is a little bit, it is a little bit surprising to me, but still the computer was doing fairly well in my opinion. Similarly to the Karpov chess set, the European chess set does have some advantages over, say, playing online or maybe using some other chess sets. In particular, in situations where you might not have the ability to connect online, to go online where maybe you don't have a smartphone, or maybe, like I said, you're somewhere on in an uninhabited island, or you're somewhere where basically you're not able to link in any way online or anything. This is great. Um, for somebody that just wants an autonomous board that'll sort of play by itself without any connections or anything like that, just turn it on and start playing, okay? Uh, similarly to the Karpov chess set, the pieces are gonna be of the same size and we'll take a look here in just a second. I did find that the Europe chess set, the pieces were sticking to the board a little bit more tightly. It could be just that there's a natural vari like variance between Board. So maybe if I ordered another Karpov chess set board, maybe the pieces would stick a little bit more tightly. I'm, I'm not really sure. Once again, the pieces have magnets inside of them and then the board, I guess, have some some kind of a material that will magnetize to the, the pieces. Same, same layout, same board uh, pressing and everything. I did find that the, the button pressing on, on this board, and I'm not sure the the pressing uh sensitivity on on the europe chess set was a little bit lighter in my opinion it, it was a, almost almost non-existent meaning you didn't have to press it like in 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 the karpov chess set i felt like it was already pretty light meaning if you just put the finger on 
it's not going to do anything. But barely, barely put any pressure and it immediately recognizes it. Which is, I mean, I guess it's a good thing. So that way you don't have to depress the pieces physically like into the board. And maybe if you don't have to depress the pieces like really hard, then over time, maybe you won't wear out the board as much. But at the same time, I was a little bit apprehensive about the fact that if it's that light, could I be getting, you know, my pieces mixed up? But, you know, overall, I thought that it's not like, like if, if, if you mess, mess up a, a move or something, maybe you could take the piece back. Either way, I think overall, um, this board is, is really quite nice size-wise, just like the Karpov chess set. I feel like it's not super big. It's definitely not going to be one of those boards that you take on tournaments with you. It's more or less kind of like a size that I would expect out of a travel chess set. Not even like an analysis. I would probably apt to get like a, a bigger board for analysis board if I could. But maybe an analysis board on the go, this might still be a great option. You could always analyze your chess games without even turning on the computer. So that way you could say, hey, I know I have the option of playing against the computer, but what if I just wanted to bring this with me while I'm on the train or I'm on the bus and I have time, then I could just have the pieces here compartmentalized. I can take them out. I can study my chess games and then not even be bothered by the whole computer thing. Okay, so that's that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show these two boards up close, kind of give you guys a little bit better idea how the computer operates here and uh, allow you guys to kind of make your own decision as far as what you think about this board and what you think about the other board. By the way, if you haven't seen the, the Karpov chess set video that I made previously, do be sure to, to go and check it out. Okay, so before we take a look at these chess boards a little bit more closely, I want to take a minute of your time to talk a little bit about I care, okay? I care, we are all kind of living and moving into the future where our health and the health of the people around us is becoming more and more apparent and, and, and there's a little bit more of an emphasis on just trying to preserve our health as much as possible uh, so that we can live longer and so we can enjoy the things that we enjoy a little bit longer as well. Now, with that being said, a couple of days ago was my wife's birthday and I ended up finding her this really lovely little books, Air 2 Plus. Uh, it's an electronic ink tablet. I've never had electronic ink devices, so it was something that I was interested in to get for my wife because she does take a lot of notes and hopefully I wanted to see if she could start reading more books. But uh, one of the cool things about this device is the, the tablet ink, like the, the screen on the device is completely different from what we're used to with cell phones and everything. It uh, does have a little bit of backlight uh, for you to be able to read the books and take notes at night. But either way, uh, the technology is different here. It's like ink on paper. And one of the, the things that, that really kind of drew my attention to this type of a tablet is the fact that um, it doesn't hurt your eyes because it allows you to be able to, to view the screen just like you would view a piece of paper. So it's a lot less strain on your eyes, a lot less blue light. So that would bring me to a very important point is that, uh, you know, in today's day and age, it's, it's so convenient and so easy to be able to play chess games online, whether it's chess.com or Lee Chess on our phone or on our laptop or, you know, whatever other device that you enjoy playing it on. But the, the truth is for a lot of chess players that um, do play chess more or less uh, seriously, or at least put in some amount of time, you have to take into account the fact that, that you, you know, you're exposing your eyes to quite a bit of screen time. And, I, but I, my dad has always taught me that when you're, when you're looking at your screen, whether, you know, it's a laptop or a cell phone, generally the screen is not moving back and forth and your eyes does not focus back and forth. So not only are you kind of subjecting your eyes to some eye strain from looking at the screen, at the same time, uh, when you're looking at a, at a real chessboard, especially like the, the tournament chessboards, you're focusing between different distances with your eyes. So the muscles that will focus back and forth are actually continuously working. You're analyzing, you're looking at a real object, a 3D object, and you're analyzing it from multiple directions. Your eyes are moving, you're blinking. When you're looking at the screen, the screen's about the same distance from you. There is the issue of blue light, so you're, you're exposing your eyes to a lot of blue light. And the fact that, you know, um, you're, you're not moving around 
it, it's sort of it's not good for your eyes basically what i'm saying and it wouldn't be a big issue and i wouldn't even bring it up but the more i thought about it the more i realized you know for people that maybe play one game of chess per month it's not really a big deal you can play using whatever device you want to play but for a lot of people that really get into chess, they do not even, they're not even aware of the fact that they might be spending quite a few hours in front of the computer, which we already do, a lot of us do. But if we take in that into consideration and we kind of tell ourselves, hey, you know, spending that much time in front of a computer isn't really good for our eyes long term, then we start to say, okay, how can I minimize screen time as much as possible, which you know, I try to conscientiously be aware of that fact because especially like we'll have TV running, the kids watching TV, you start to see the fact that the kids are being exposed to a lot of screen time and then you start to see, hey, I'm doing the same thing too. And over time, that could potentially have some negative effects on our on our eyes, okay? So, I mean, these these are great screens. I got my phone here, very vibrant. I mean, this is another great screen. This is just the kid's iPad, but it's it's just something to be to be aware of. I want you guys to to have preserve your health as much as possible. Like for example, for me, um, when I go down to to the gym to work out in in the basement, I uh, we have the my my wife actually. I bought her these little AirPod Pro that I can safely link up with. Uh, the computer downstairs and I can, I can I can work out I can use the elliptical I can use the bike I can use the rowing machine and it has noise cancellation so this is fantastic it stays in your ears you can work out for as long as you can however a lot of times I prefer these why because I work out almost every day and I work out for at least about 40 minutes to an hour if you take into account that maybe once every once in a while, like once every week maybe, you go downstairs or wherever, you go to the gym, you work out, sure, you can use these, but do take into account that they're using some kind of uh, frequency, some kind of a Wi-Fi frequency, Bluetooth, what have you, and you're putting it right next to your brain, and although for a couple of minutes it might not be a big issue, think about the accumulatively how many hours you could be wearing these if you made something regular okay so just like working out chest time for a lot of people can become a regular routine it can be part of your regular day so like i said in that situation where you are not even aware of the fact that maybe you're spending more than 10 hours playing or analyzing games that can take a toll over time and then before you know it for some reason you're like wow my eyesight's not as good as it was before well you know how many hundreds and hundreds of hours have you spent looking at the computer that is why sometimes getting a physical board um maybe like uh you know if you're still playing online and if you want to play online just getting like a square off board or the chestnut air board something where you can still enjoy being able to play online but not hurt your eyes as much so just something that i wanted to bring to your, your guys attention so um uh, that's that anyway so let's take a look at these boards a little bit more closely okay okay so here we are the two boards up close hopefully i'll be able to show you guys a little bit about how they look as far as the software i thought i recorded this part but i guess i didn't have the camera on so i'm just gonna have to re-record it here on the floor um, anyways, as you guys can see up close, the boards are pretty sim similar in design. Button layout is going to be a little bit different color of the buttons, a little bit different, but more or less pretty much the same thing as you could see, same buttons here, help. Um, this one has a Y, whereas this one doesn't, so the Y will kind of speech output explain why something, you know, wasn't done right or why a certain move the computer believes that you should have done differently, but... Um, when you turn these on, um, hopefully we'll be able to say a little bit, see from the screen a little bit what's going on. Um, you can press a new game here and in, in this particular design it will ask you, here we go, if, if you press a new game on the Karpov chessboard it'll say, okay, new game, and you press press this and it'll, it'll prompt you whether or not you want to play chess or just chess. So that was one of the things that I found a little bit confusing when I initially uh, reviewed this board is that when you get to this option and it asks you whether or not you want to play chess or chess, I thought, well, this is kind of redundant. Why would you even have this step? Well, I did realize that that was the case here because when you turn the, the, the game on and you, you 
press new game, you can do either chess and uh, like I'll show you guys chess here, the same option is here, but then here it'll have chess, checkers, reversi, four in a row, uh, this fox plus G, whatever it is, G slash hopper. So uh, nim, north, and chess. So different ones, and then when you click on chess, if you wanna play chess, it'll bring you up to this option, we'll say normal, ex uh, exercise, rated, blitz five, Ra rapid 25, rapid 30, uh, mate and two different exercises. And then we have these options of playing with either just a king and all the pawns, a king and knight and all the pawns, king, pawns, and bishop, king, pawns, and rooks, or king and queen and pawns. So different, different sort of different games here, as you can see. When we press on this one here and we press yes, okay, chess, we have the same, same options. We have the rated, exercise, mate and two, and then the same ones, king and pawns, king knights pawns, king bishops pawns, king rooks pawns, king queen pawns, and the normal. So the same exact stuff, rapid 30, rapid 25, blitz five, rated, um, same exact ones as in, in that one. You just have a little bit more options as far as other games. That's why on the box it said eight and one. But um, everything else pretty pretty much the same speaker layout. You have a speaker here. You also have a speaker on the same side. The loudness of the speaker can be adjusted in the settings. And um, overall, like I said, it's 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 a very very similar very similar layout here. One of the things I noticed is the the light squares on this board. Maybe if you guys can see, are um, a little bit brighter. Like these look a little bit more beige, like light gray kind of white whereas this these are a little bit a little bit lighter um, that may be like a, a variance among just different boards I'm not sure maybe if I ordered another another one of these carbon boards maybe I would get the the squares a little bit lighter but there you have it at least the the main difference here is just the squares are a little bit different color I feel like you have to press a little bit more firmly on this honestly this is kind of a little bit lighter press, but not by much, really, just just ever so slightly. Um, and there you have it. That's the, sort of the main the main computer layout. As you could see, if we if we uh, flip the boards over here, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this, but that's the sort of the electrical um, input from the wall wall one, and uh, the this board has the same the same thing on the same side, but you I wasn't provided with an adapter a DC. It just says it uses an adapter. It says DC and five volt, 600 milliamp here. So just in case you decide to, to get yourself one. Um, and like I said, the back side's very, very similar. Uh, the positioning of the reset buttons, the same place. The little rubber knobs are in the same position. These are actually pretty useful if you are intending to play on like a slanted surface where without the knobs, the, the boards would slide. The knobs, uh, you know, provide a little bit more traction. You have the the place for the batteries, same amount of batteries, and then the place for the the place for your pieces. In this particular case, you get the the checkers pieces as well. That that does make the, this board a little bit heavier, just ever so slightly, because uh, it's occupied by these little checker pieces, and each one has a little magnet, so it does make this board just a little bit heavier, probably by a few grams. Is one of the first things that I recognized when I took this board out of the case. I was like, ooh, this one's a little bit heavier. And then I opened the back and I was like, I see why. Okay, so uh, that's about it uh, for this, uh, for this, uh, the, the, the overall how the board looks. One of the things here you have to pay attention to is sometimes because the pieces can kind of get in the way of you closing the, uh, the top portion, you have to kind of rearrange the, especially the chest pieces. And then sometimes, see, you still have the pieces sort of getting in the way. That is one of the things that I found that was a little bit annoying, but not not really all that much. Here we go. Well, my friends, that's about it. That's pretty much all I wanted to show you in this video. I know I could have been a little bit more detailed in kind of showing you the nuances of, of being able to play, but uh, for more or less, like I said, this particular chess European chess set, uh, chess set is very, very similar to the Karpov chess set. And uh, overall, like the playing experience is also very similar. If you are interested in seeing 
more or less about how the the pieces move and everything and how the, the little computer part responds it's they're both about the same so be sure to head to the Karpov chess set video that I made last week and check that out if you if you're interested otherwise I'll be sure to include a link below where you can check out this chessboard if you are interested in maybe purchasing it for yourself or for somebody as a gift I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these videos as always I know time is valuable for everybody so thank you for taking the time especially if you guys take the time to watch these videos in their entirety because that way it allows uh, the videos to be seen by more people so everybody have a great week i hope you guys enjoyed this video uh, and please let me know what you think about these chess sets and i'll see you guys in the next video okay bye bye